Hello all, welcome to part 31 of STNG training series. In this session, I am going to explain and practically demonstrate how to separate data provider method into a separate class using data provider class attribute. Till now, we have the test methods and data provider, that is data supplier methods inside the same class. So no problem. What if you move this data provider method into a separate class, whether the test method will be able to receive the data from this data provider methods, which are separated into a separate class. Okay, test methods are in a separate class. Data provider method is in a separate class. Is it possible to transfer the data between the classes? Whether the data provider in one class can supply the data to the test methods in other class. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible, guys, with the help of this data provider class attribute. So let's get started, guys. We are going to separate the data provider method, which is along with the test methods in the same class, into a separate class. And still, data provider method should be able to supply the data to the okay test methods in the other class. And that is possible with the help of this data provider class attribute, guys. So, so here is the code, guys. I'm going to follow all these steps, okay? So here is the code where the test method is inside the same class and data provider method is also inside the same class. Now the tests are running fine, okay? If you run this code, you run this test, the test will run fine. The data, three sets of data are being supplied to this uh, test method and uh, they both are in the same class, guys. So there's no problem in this. Okay, we have not separated the data provider method into a separate class. It is working fine. You see one of the tests has completed. Uh, one set of data is complete. Second set of data is completed. Same test, but uh, multiple sets of data. Okay, third set of data. Test is completed and everything got passed. If you see the results here, verify login. Same test got executed three times with different sets of data. Okay, it's working fine. What if I move this data? provider method into a separate class. Not always the data provider can stay in the same class where the test methods are there, right? In real time, you may have the data, data provider methods in separate classes, okay? So I'll just name this as sample data class or something, whatever the name you wanted to give, okay? Sample, uh, sample provider or something, okay? Sample provider. Like this, I'll give some name, guys. Sample provider is the name of the class I'm giving. You can give any name for this class. Click on finish. And into this sample provider class, okay, that I randomly created the given the name, I'll move this data provider method as it is. I'll cut from here. You see, no more. The data provider method is inside the same class where test method is there. Now I'm moving that into the separate class known as sample provider class. Okay. Now, now guys, what will happen if I run this test? Will the data provider method in a separate class known as sample provider class can supply the data to this test method because here data provider get test data is there, get test data is there, but data provider is part of another class. Will the test method will be able to locate the supplier of the data? Let's find it out. If you run this, you will get an exception guys, okay? This test method will not be able to find the data provider method. And, in, and because of that, you will get an exception known as test change exception saying, Verify login, which is a test method, at the rate test method, is requires a data provider method uh, named as get test data, okay, which is not foundable. You see, get test data related uh, named uh, data provider method is not foundable. That's what, and uh, the tests are unable to run, okay. The data is not getting supplied to this test data. The problem here is we provided the data provider name, okay, we provided the name of the data provider, either the name of the method or name of the data provider we have provided. But did we provide to this test method from in, in which class this data provider method is available? Did we provide to this uh, uh, test method that in which class this data provider method is now currently available? We didn't provide. So what we have to do is we have to put a comma here. After the comma, we have to use the attribute that I was talking about that is data provider class attribute, okay? So data provider class attribute is equal to, we have to give the name of the class. Sample provider is the name of the class under which this uh, data supply, uh, that method is available, okay? Data provider method is available. So sample provider is a class name. And also you have to end this with dot 
class. So here you are telling to the test method that this particular data provider, which is having the name as get test data, is available in a class known as sample provider. This is a format, guys. Okay, you have to end with dot class, guys. Don't forget, otherwise you'll get error. Now the test method knows what is the data provider method name and also in which class it is available. Now it should work. Yes, it has to work now, guys. Okay, run this and see that the test will run seamlessly now without any problem. The data will be supplied by the data provider uh, data provider method from a separate class because the test method knows now in which class this data provider method is available. We have mentioned in the test at the rate test annotation circular brackets the location of the class where this data provider method is available. Hence, it is working fine and which is only possible with the help of data provider class attribute. Okay, you see all the things got passed. Uh, the same test got uh, repeatedly run three times because three sets of data are there. Okay, it's working fine. Now this is working fine because even after separating the data provider method, it is working fine because we, pro we use this data provider class and uh, located the class in which this data provider method is available. So hope guys, you understood how to separate the data provider method into a separate class using data provider class attribute. So that's all for this session. The next session, I'm going to cover another test topic for you. Till then, see you. Bye-bye.